Welcome to the Audio Fundamentals course, episode four. Today we're going to talk about envelopes, and specifically the ADSR type of envelope. Then we'll relate those back to complex waves as we were talking about earlier. So an envelope, one way of thinking about it is it's a graph of how some aspect of a sound changes over time. The most common form of envelope is an envelope showing how the amplitude of a sound changes over time. But you can see that applying to other aspects of the sound, such as the timbre, in other words, the tone quality of the sound, or the frequency. Here's an example of a wave with a fairly complicated amplitude envelope. You can see it on the screen. Now here's an example of a frequency envelope. Here's an envelope controlling the timbre of the sound, the tone quality of it. And of course, there's nothing stopping a wave from having envelopes in all those aspects at once. Now, one of the most common types of envelope that you can specify when you're creating sounds on a synthesizer is the ADSR. Now, you might recognize this type of a graph. Here we have amplitude on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. And then you often see in manuals and articles, you see a shape like this. That represents the four phases of the ADSR envelope. First, you have A for attack time, and that's the time it takes to go from silence up to the full amplitude that that sound is going to be at. Then you have decay, which is the time down from full amplitude to the level that's going to be set by the next step, or sustain. Sustain is not a length of time. Sustain is the amplitude, the percentage of full, where the note will be held as someone holds down a key on the synthesizer. And then you have the release time, which is the amount of time it takes to go down to zero from wherever the sound is at the moment the key is released. So we have this familiar shape. The green part represents the attack time. Yellow part represents the decay time. The orange section is the sustain level. And the red part is the release time. There has to be some way to determine how long the sustain phase lasts. And at least on a keyboard, that's done by noticing when the key is pressed down and when it's let up. So as you can see on the far left, as soon as the key is hit, the attack phase begins, goes through attack and decay, and then just hangs out at the sustain level until you release the key, and then the release phase happens. Here are some ways that the ADSR envelope is used in synthesis. Right now I have A, D, S, and R all set to their lowest values. Attack, decay, and release times are as short as possible, and the sustain level is at zero. On the oscilloscope here, we've zoomed out far enough that you can actually see the ADSR shape, like so. And as I continue to hold the key down, the sound continues to sustain at the same level, and when I let it up, it dies away at the rate set by the release time. So here are some common settings for sounds using ADSR. First, let's make a sound that starts instantly when you press the key and then stops as soon as you release it. It's pretty simple. Attack and decay time set to their shortest value instant and release also set to the shortest value instant. Let's say that you don't like the sound of this because it's too harsh at the beginning and endings. We can increase the attack and release times. Remember, attack is when you hit the key and release is when you let up the key to make it a little softer. Let's do a little more. Let's 
Let's say you want to go the other way. Let's say you want to add more punch to the sound. One way you can do this is decrease the sustain to, let's say, half, and we'll set attack to instant and decay to a short but not instant time. Then we get this. If I increase the volume of the track to compensate for the lower sustain level, you get an interesting sound that way. Next, let's look at a couple sounds that decay naturally. Here's one that sort of resembles a piano. You won't hear the piano timbre, but you'll hear the envelope is kind of like a piano. I'm going to set the attack to instant, the decay to quite long, sustain to zero because you can't hold a note on a piano and have it continue forever, and release fairly quick because when you release a note on a piano, the dampers, the felt, stops the note quickly but not instantly. Here's what we get this way. I'm still holding the note down. Even though I'm holding the key down, it does die down to nothing eventually. Now, since I held it down the entire life of the note, what you heard was just the decay time. If I let up the note while it is still fairly loud, then you'll see that as soon as I let up the key, it jumped to the release part of the envelope and stopped the note much quicker than the decay time. Now let's simulate the envelope of something like a harp. Those notes don't last as long, so let's reduce the decay time. Then we need to carefully match the release time to the decay time. The reason we do this is so that you can either press the key and hold it down, and then it dies away for the decay time, or you can press it and immediately let it up, and it'll die away for the release time, which is exactly the same as the decay time. So you can do some arpeggios like this, and you don't have to hold down the notes to let them decay the full amount of time. No matter where you set the sustain, when the note first attacks, the first thing it does is go up to full volume. And that can either t be instant, or it can take some time. Right there you see it went to full and then decayed down to the sustain level. Now I let up the note, and it releases. You can combine several of those concepts to create what sounded, at least in the 70s and 80s, a little bit like a violin. We get a quick but not instant attack which goes up to full volume. Then a fairly quick decay to a sustain level that's a bit lower than full volume, and a pretty quick release. We're going to have to increase this a bit. Another thing I'm going to do for this sound is make it so only one note can play at a time. This sort of spikiness of the beginning of each note simulates the bowing of a violin. Now, as promised, let's bring that all back to what we were talking about with complex waves. Now, as you remember, complex waves are made up of combinations of partials. And the mathematical relationship, whether they're multiples of each other or wildly different, that predicts the type of tone of the sound. And in fact, this is the definition of the word timbre that we'll be using more often. Now, what can make a sound even more interesting is that every single partial can have its own envelope. So if you just take a recording of a person saying a word, you have a multitude of partials coming in and out with different envelopes to form that sound. And once again, we have our good friend, the Spectrum Analyzer, which is kind of like graphing the amplitude envelopes of all the different partials in a sound. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate your questions and comments, so please feel free to write those in the comments on YouTube. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying the videos, and I'm willing to listen to stuff that you'd like me to cover in particular. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.